Hello, my name is Bill Taylor. I'm chief meteorologist at Ken's 5 Television, the CBS station here in beautiful San Antonio, Texas. We're gonna answer some weather questions and give you a little bit of knowledge on our beautiful atmosphere. I'm forever a student of our atmosphere and you can be too if you study meteorology. It's a fascinating, imperfect science. We, we don't know everything, but we know more than we've ever known about our atmosphere and how it behaves. And that's what I do on a nightly basis on Ken's Five, tell you more about what's going to happen and how the atmosphere is expected to behave in coming days because it's going to affect your life. Nothing affects everyone's life more than weather. True story. Let's get our first question in. We've got some students here at John Glenn that are gonna give us a couple of questions. And here we go with our first one. What is it, darling? Well, What weather instrument used to detect direction of wind and wind speed? The anemometer. That sounds pretty complicated, so we'll write it out. Anemometer. Not the best penmanship, but I don't know if you can see it from there. The anemometer. All right, next question. What causes tide and why do they change? What causes tides and why do they change? Great question. Let's bring in our globe. I've got the whole world in my hands. Okay, so here's what happens. When the moon is orbiting the Earth, remember the moon is a natural satellite orbiting the Earth, there is gravitational pull with the moon. The moon moves around the Earth 24-7, and where it is, is pulling water towards it. Or if it's on the opposite end, water's moving away from that gravitational pull. So that results in our low and high tides. All right, next question. Good stuff. What is the difference between weather and climate? The difference between weather and climate. Weather is today. When I do the weather forecast, I'm gonna tell you about what the current conditions are and what we expect in the next 24 to 48 hours, okay? That's weather. Climate is history. What has historically happened in our weather over the course of 10 years, 30 years, 100 years? Remember, in fact, that last answer, about 100, a little more than that, is all we have in climate. That's the recorded history of weather. We've only been recording highs and lows and the amount of rain for a little more than 100 years. So climate is history, weather is every day. Midland College, all right. How are you? Good. How does the sun and the ocean interact in the water cycle? How does the sun and the ocean interact in the water cycle? Well, that's kind of where it begins. Remember, when the sun is heating up our globe, our planet, our huge rock that's floating through space, it's going to enhance that evaporation process, the first leg of our water cycle. So the sun angle coming in is gonna help enhance evaporation. Evaporation doesn't need the sun necessarily, it happens without it, but it's enhanced with it. And so that evaporation process begins and that's the first leg of our water cycle. Of course, it moves then to condensation, precipitation, and then the fourth is runoff before it all begins again. Remember that cycle means that it continues in that same format. So it starts and begins at the same spot. It cycles. Okay, we're ready. Next what question. Causes, what causes the weather to change from day to day? What causes the weather to change from day to day has to do with pressure systems, like highs and lows. So we study in weather high pressure and low pressure. And these are the two big essentials. And remember, there are other components like a cold front. This is what they look like. These are the symbols on our weather maps that we use in meteorology. So high pressure usually means good weather. That's gonna be a sinking air motion in the atmosphere, a lot of sunshine, and typically a lot of heat. In fact, a lot of times we'll just use the H for happy. H means happy. It's gonna be nice. Then low pressure, rising air. Okay, so everything has lift or what we call buoyancy in the atmosphere, instability, and that leads to rainfall because you already have evaporation occurring. 
When you bring low pressure into the equation, now you're enhancing that. And just like the sun, in a sense, you're getting more water into the atmosphere and it's lifting because again, this is a lifting motion of air in the atmosphere. So it creates a lot of instability and it helps bring more water into the clouds and make it what's called precipitable water. Say that, precipitable, tough word. We're not gonna try to spell it. But here's the deal, when you have precipitable water, you have water in the atmosphere waiting to rain, waiting for a cold front, waiting for something to trigger it and get that rain to fall. Gravity's helping, by the way. Gravity's trying to pull that water down to the surface as well. Eventually, you get a cold front or an area of low pressure to really stir things up and get some weather. So H for happy weather, L for lousy weather. But a lot of times, it's high pressure and low pressure systems, cold fronts and warm fronts, tropical systems, that's how we kind of know what's gonna be happening. And remember, we have satellites that are orbiting the Earth. They're called geostationary because they're orbiting at the same rate and speed that the Earth is spinning. So it's as though it's stationary, okay? So when I'm showing you satellite images and you see the clouds moving, that's from our satellites that are orbiting the Earth, okay? And they're orbiting at the same speed. So as the Earth is spinning on its axis, the satellite's moving at that same rate. So it's geostationary. It's not really stationary, but it gives you the perception that it is because it's moving at the same speed. So we look at those satellite images and we see, oh, there's a system and it's moving from west to east, or there's a system moving from east to west. And so we determine timing and we see exactly when that system's supposed to arrive here. Okay, next question is coming in. They're coming in hot. How are you? Let's go. Why do the seasons change? Great question. Why do the seasons change? We're talking about our planet, right? So notice that when we stand, when we hold the planet upright, now I've got this flat. The Earth is tilted. See how it's tilted on its axis? It's not straight up and down, it's tilted. So it's about 23 to 24 degree tilt, okay? And remember, we're spinning on that axis just like this as we're orbiting the sun. Okay, so we're orbiting around the sun while spinning on our axis. Well, what's happening is, as we're moving around the sun, the sun's direct rays are hitting different parts of the planet. At certain times of the year, it's hitting the northern hemisphere. Okay, and that's gonna be our summer solstice. Then, at certain times of the year, it's hitting the southern hemisphere and centered up there. That's gonna be our winter solstice because that's when the earth is tilted away and the sun is not getting a lot of its heat, as much of its heat, to the northern hemisphere. Then we have the vernal and the autumnal, the spring and fall equinoxes. That's when the equinox is when the sun's direct rays are hitting the equator, equal, equinox, equator. So it's hitting right at the center of the earth and there's an equal distribution of that sunlight between the northern and southern hemisphere. So it depends on what, where we are in that orbit around the sun. That's how we determine seasons, because it's one, two, three, four positions that determine winter, spring, summer, fall. Great question. All right, our final question. You ready? We always save the best for last. Bring it on, brother. Don't make it too difficult. <laughs> Where was I on the night of what? No. <laughs> how, how come days are cloudy and some days are cloudy and other days are not? Why? Why do clouds have different shapes? All right, so why do clouds have different shapes? A lot of times temperature and winds. Remember, when we look at clouds, especially cumulus clouds are the ones that have the great shapes that you can see. I see a unicorn, hey, there's a frog, and there's a cow. You can see all different kinds of shapes, right? Well, what's really cool is you've got about 10 or 15 minutes before that cloud shape changes. That's how often it changes. So here's the thing, cloud shape is all determined by temperature, because remember, to even see those clouds begin building, you need a good change in temperature up there. It has to go from warm down here to cold up top, okay? And as long as that's the case, then we're gonna start seeing that formation occur as more precipitation gets, or more evaporation occurs and we get more water up there. And then the winds are gonna be changing things just a little bit as well. But that's basically what happens. And within 10 to 15 minutes, that shape is going to change. Hey, some great questions. Thank you very much. We're forever students of our atmosphere, so keep up the great work.